We're in Oklahoma and there's a major thunderstorm around us. I really don't know what to do at this point. And now my center screen is stuck in this 360 view. I cannot get my map. I cannot get my Apple CarPlay. Hmm, interesting. What do I do? Go. I recently drove from sunny San Diego to Arkansas and back in my 2024 Genesis GV70 all in five days. We visited the charming town of Rogers, Arkansas. And in this video, I'll share with you my impressions of our vehicle on this over 3,200 mile road trip. We're finally on the road to get to Arkansas. This, uh, this trip that I'm doing, it's gonna be a 25 hour trip. And it's interesting because when I Googled it, it gives me different routes, but I chose a slightly longer route than, than the one that it advised me to take first because it's like a 23 hour drive, but it goes through a lot of little towns, places that I don't know too much. So I rather chose this maybe like a tw 26 hour route and it's gonna take me through Dallas and I know most of the road that way. Um, this is by far the longest uh, trip I've done on this uh, 2024 Genesis GV70. Remember that a couple of years ago, me and my, my nephew, Diego, we went to Florida, but that was in the Tesla Model Y, and that was a nightmare because of the charging situation. So I like this sense of normalcy and this um, internal combustion engine SUV that is pretty comfortable, it's pretty good. $4.29 for gas in Yuma. That's a dollar and ten cents cheaper than San Diego. I decided to start using premium gas a few Phillips ago. I really don't know why. I mean, it's recommended. That's what it says here. The manual says recommended, doesn't say required. So my guess is it's not going to have a negative effect on the reliability of the engine. But I mean, I'm going to do it. If later my budget changes, I might just um, bring it down to unlet it again. But for now, premium is going to be. It does make a difference because the difference between unleaded and a premium is usually maybe like 40 to 60 cents in difference. So yeah, it was about seven gallons. So yeah, almost eight dollars that I saved compared to California. Look at all these bugs. Uh, that's the desert in Pure Valley, full of bugs everywhere. It's kind of normal, right? Have you seen this anywhere else? Let me know in the comments. It's just that stretch from San Diego to El Centro, you should use the windshield like this. Pretty nasty. If you wonder how come the co-pilot is not doing this, right? But no, but I'm gonna make him drive right now. Hopefully I can take a nap and our next stop is gonna be somewhere around Tucson in about four hours. My sister said that there's a tornado alert in Arkansas and the, the shortest route takes me higher in the States. And I'm not familiar with that area, but I feel that there's more tornadoes that way. So I'm just gonna stick south as much as I can and then work my way up. It's 218 and we are in a place called Payson or something like that. And we're still in Arizona and we've been driving for about just about seven hours and we need to take a nap. 6.25, we slept about four hours. My car's still there. Time to get on the road for another 17 hours. No time for continental breakfast at the hotel. It wasn't that appealing to begin with. So we're gonna get some, just some quick breakfast, sandwich, and get on the road. We still have over 16 hours to go. Another beautiful morning, I noticed as the brakes are squeaking a little bit. I noticed first yesterday when I picked up the car and uh, only in reverse, but then earlier I, we stopped for, for some uh, coffee and they were doing it also when I was taxiing into the drive-through. So um, 
I don't know if it's going to be an issue. I hadn't noticed. Uh, these are some really nice views. Look at this. We took this route. Never been around this part of Arizona. I think eventually from here, we should be heading New Mexico. I just don't know where I am. And Last night, I was having like a little bit of anxiety in the middle of the night, like not knowing where I was going. Um, I can follow GPS all day, but it doesn't tell me if I'm, if I'm close to getting to New Mexico. I think we're going to drive through New Mexico at some point, Albuquerque, Albuquerque maybe. But I'm really enjoying these views. People think I'm crazy for driving 1,600 miles each way. Like, literally, everybody I told, like, what is wrong with you? Why don't you just fly? I mean, half of my family is already there. And it's going to take me a whole day and a half to get there. Just because I hate driving. I mean, I hate flying. And I love driving. And this is one of the main reasons. Look at this. This is very soothing for me. What are these pines? I think this is an Indian reservation. I'll look it up, and I'll let you know what this is, because it looks beautiful. I just got pulled over by the state trooper. He was super cool because I was doing, I guess I was doing 60 on the 35 zone, but I literally had no intentions. Luckily, he just let me off with the warning. So he was pretty understandable. I explained my whole situation. I told him where I was going and he said I was crazy. So, yeah. This is New Mexico now. And we are maybe like four hours from Albuquerque. Albuquerque. <laughs> let me say that again, Albuquerque. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. The, the thing about this route is I don't know the bigger cities that I'm gonna hit, so I have enough gas for maybe like another two hours, but because I don't know where I'm gonna be in two hours, I'd rather fill up here in a big city and maybe get a better deal on gas. somewhere in Texas and we're still about eight hours from our destination I'm starting to get tired and uh, yeah we've been on the road since yesterday maybe for around 22 hours so we've done like about 18 hours of straight driving and we have traveled over a thousand miles by now I'm sorry with this camera work this camera work is atrocious guys and I apologize just I don't have time to set up I don't I want to get there so normally I will set up my GoPros on my car and all that but um, I apologize for the poor camera work and what I wanted to show you there is that after so many hours of driving the seat became uncomfortable I mean I always make use of uh, the lower back lumbar support and any vehicle that I drive it here maybe the type of material of my shirt along with the firm leather and the trim of the seat I started to feel like a rub burn on my lower back I had to deflate the lower support and it helped and as I said before in other videos, these seats are too firm for my taste, but please let me know in the comments if you find them as firm as I do. Then again, I wonder if most seats become uncomfortable after so many hours of driving. Freeway 40 is closed, so we got off the freeway and it gave me a chance to look at this picturesque landscape. But unfortunately, I added about 30 minutes to our drive. We are entering Oklahoma. This is my first time in Oklahoma. I don't think we drove through this to get to Florida. Yeah, I don't think so. This is further north. So, yep, doesn't look much different than Texas. It's just a continuation of the same beautiful landscape. I hope to see a lot of cows as well. So far, the car is doing really good. And for those of you that asked, let me show you. One of the questions was, which car is more roomy, this one or the Tesla Model Y? Honestly, the Tesla Model Y has infinite amounts of cargo area compared to this, right? This is a rear wheel drive based SUV. So the dimensions are a little bit on the stingy side for passengers and cargo. This, that's just the nature of this type of platform.
now that my neighbor took over the wheel, I want to show you that in Oklahoma, there's places where you could drive 80 miles an hour. So for those of you that tell me that when I drove my Tesla Model Y, that if I kept it below a certain speed, I could get more range than I did. If this is the speed limit 80, what am I going to do in a Tesla driving 70, 65 just to conserve the battery? There's no way. So if I did 80 on an electric vehicle, I will run through the battery like nothing. We missed our exit and we were in this single lane road for I don't know how much longer. But it's really late at night, really lonely road, super dark. This is where people get killed. Oh wow. I guess this is the way and I hope it's not for the next 65 miles. Okay, we're here, we're gonna open the gate just to continue with this agony. But I'm just so glad that we made it. But it's a gated community. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wake up my family to come and get me from the gate. All good things come to an end. It's Sunday at 4 10 p.m. and we're driving to California. We should be there by tomorrow by maybe 7 or 8 in the afternoon. Uh, it should be maybe like a 29 hour drive. I already know the way so I know what to expect and I'll be able to stretch my stops a little bit more maybe to save maybe an hour or two on the way back. At 392 it's $1.50 below what I pay in California. Crazy right? So we're gonna fill up right now. And we should be getting legs for about three hours. I'm not gonna stop as often on the way there, hoping to maximize my time and be able to get there a little bit earlier. It says 22 hours of driving time. Um, it did say about 24 hours, 23 and a half on the way here. So I have confidence that because I know the way a little bit better now, I should be able to get there in about 21 hours plus the stop that we're gonna have to make to sleep tonight. So I'm hoping that we're gonna take a nap for about four hours. We're probably gonna be at the hotel for about five hours in total and, um, and just get there as soon as possible. So we made our way to the state of Oklahoma. I mean, we might have been in the corner of Arkansas because we were only in Arkansas for about 30 minutes. And now we just started the state of Oklahoma. I'm not familiar with any of this route because when I did it here, it was at night. So you can see any of this beauty, so green, so nice. So I, I really like what I see right now. When I got here, it was all dark, so I couldn't see any of this beautiful scenery. Instead of Oklahoma, this is the south of the United States. This is a little bit confusing. Check this out. Here in Oklahoma, you have 91, 89, 87. Then it gets a little bit confusing here because this is regular 87 with ethanol i'm guessing and then with no ethanol then you have this flex fuel that i've seen on on, uh, on vehicles i see the uh, the batch for ethanol vehicles mostly on fords and some chevys and then you have these two hoses one for the pure ethanol and i'm guessing this has to be for this one right here so it is a little bit confusing and i'm glad i'm fully awake Okay, it took 7.29 gallons and we're good to go for another at least three or four hours of driving. I'm doing great right now. We're somewhere in Oklahoma, by the way. I forgot the name of this town. Let's keep going. Okay, I'm sorry about the sound quality of this clip. I don't have a lot of time to record because I want to focus on the road and we're in Oklahoma and there's a major thunderstorm around us. I don't know for how much longer we're going to drive. We might be able, we might have to pull over and just rest here or I really don't know what to do at this point. Okay, that thunderstorm, luckily it didn't last that long. It was like 30 minutes, but it was very intense. Unlike anything I've seen before, we left Oklahoma behind and we have been Texas for like the last hour. So this is what you guys talk about, right? 93 octane, this is your premium. It's pretty cool. In California, regular is 87, plus it's 89, and premium is 91. We, here we get 93 at only 
379 in California right now is like at 550 per gallon on a good day. It's even uh, over six dollars in some stations. So not bad at all. We're only like maybe like an hour and change from Amarillo, but we really had to make a, a pit stop. So we're gonna take this opportunity to um, to just gas up and stop at Amarillo and sleep. Um, I'm surprised that this gas station is closed. I'm not sure that in California they can have a gas station without an attendant, but here they have them. So I'm glad that we got gas and um, we're good to go. After four hours of rest, we're back on the road. We're still in Amarillo, Texas. We just got on the road about maybe like five minutes ago. And we're hoping to drive like three miles without stopping. Maybe stop for a little on-the-go breakfast and continue to drive the rest of the 1,000 miles that we have going on from here to my destination in San Diego, California. The weather is unbeatable right now and I hope it stays the same. Beautiful New Mexico morning. I've been driving for the last three and a half hours approximately. I think I am about 90 miles from Albuquerque, so I should be able to make it there. And now my center screen is stuck in this 360 view. I cannot get my map. I cannot get my Apple CarPlay. Hmm, interesting. What do I do? Reset the car? I will probably do that right now. Let me pull over, get to a gas station. I, I need to gas up anyways. So I'm in Albuquerque, I stopped for some uh, breakfast, coffee, but um, when I restarted the car, it's just stuck on the 360. Okay, there you go. I wanted to stretch my stop so that I could claim that I got over 400 miles of range with this fuel tank, but I couldn't because just, because we're on the outskirts of Albuquerque on the west side and I just don't want to risk not finding a gas station within 47 miles. I, I should be okay but I'm still gonna stop here. So as you can see, it is doable, and I just cannot think of an EV that can do that today for the price of this. Obviously, I'm not comparing apples to apples, but my point being is, unfortunately, EVs are not as convenient as gas engine cars as of today. And um, as much as I like them, and as much as I think they do have a place in our modern world, um, one EV for my travel pattern is not for me as of today. So we're gonna gas up here in the west, uh, west side of Albuquerque and then drive for another possibly four hours. Gas to really cheap here, around three bucks, not bad. Okay, this is gonna be one of my last updates. What I wanted to show you about this part of the trip is that we're in Phoenix. This is the Arizona desert and right now it's mid-May. I don't know when I'm gonna up upload this video, but right now it's mid-May. It's uh, 2.53 in the afternoon. It's 103 degree weather here. This is not as hot as it gets. It gets a lot hotter than this. Uh, this area of Arizona is no stranger to 110, 115. Um, so right now I'm taking advantage of the awesome air conditioner and the uh, cool seats so this is the feature that I hadn't used up until now I mean in San Diego you don't need it I've used it but I wanted to see how it held out in this super hot weather and I'm happy to inform that this AC is pretty good I'm, I'm guessing that there's a lot of insulation in this vehicle and the cool seats um, actually help a lot um, so we are four hours away and I don't know if I'm gonna do another update
finally back in San Diego after 27 hours and I'll give you the final report and the final thoughts. For my final thoughts, I would like to say that the drive was brutal. I'm not gonna lie, but I had no regrets because I did it for the joy of driving and I did most of it myself. My nephew did help with about 10% of the nearly 48 hours of effective driving time. And I wanna bring light to the issues mentioned throughout the video in case you missed any of the important ones, starting with the cargo space that is merely adequate compared to other SUVs. And I will also like to reiterate what I've said in other videos is that I find these seats to be too firm for my taste. The suspension is soft with plenty of shock absorption for road imperfection despite the wide and low profile tires made it to the 21 inch wheels. This type of setup compromises the comfort level of a vehicle compared to something more minivanish like let's say an RX350 on stock wheels. But I welcome the trade-off for how much more unique and cool I find this GV70 to be. And I'm glad that it seems like the 2025 GV70 will come with wireless upper carplay because it is annoying that on these lengthy road trips, the phone must be connected at all times in order to access the routing guide on the screen. MPG is not great, but I didn't get this GV70 with fuel efficiency as a top priority. I spent about $480 on gas alone. Had I decided to fly, tickets from San Diego will go for about $600, which is a little more, but if you add what I spent on hotels, which was another 380 and then road food, the total price of the trip was a bit over $1,000. I had an issue with the screen getting stuck on the 360 view, and I, I hadn't had this happen to me, and it hasn't happened ever since, as well as there was an alarm going off, maybe in by New Mexico, and it kept going off, and I never had heard that before, and I was able to record it, and it sounded something like this. And it went off a few times and I think it was because I left the key fob on the door pocket and once I took it and put it in my own pants pocket, the sound didn't repeat itself. I don't know what it was and I hope that it doesn't come back. The brake squeaking has not repeated itself either, but I will keep close attention to it. The tires did an amazing job in the heavy rains of Oklahoma. I was impressed with how well planted the GV70 felt on the road despite the rain. To me, tires are tires, and I usually don't overspend on name brand, but based on my experience with this set, I will consider replacing them with the exact same ones when the time comes. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button, and if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing for more related content. I'll see you next time.